is uh, Republican verdict. Tomorrow is Constitution Day. We've been talking about the Tenth Amendment. So let's talk about the Second Amendment. Governor Bush, one of the things the Supreme Court has gotten right is that it's an individual right. It's protected for individuals to hold it. Last week you said the next step in gun issues is to make sure they're not in the hands of the mentally ill. In this state, there's a controversial law that allows guns to be taken away from people without a hearing. Where does it go, and the problem of violence is endemic, but where does it go from what you said last week? How far into people's lives to take guns away from them? Not very far. I think we need to do this state by state. Uh, there are places to get this right, and we need to make sure that we protect the privacy laws. This is a complicated place, but I do think uh, the natural impulse on the left, Hillary Clinton, immediately after uh, one of these horrific violent acts took place, immediately said we need to have federal gun laws. President Obama, almost reflexively, always says the same thing. And the net result is you're going to take away rights of, of law-abiding citizens, the 99.999% of the people that are law-abiding citizens. That's not the right approach to do it. In Florida, we have a background check. We have concealed weapon permit holders. In fact, there's a million two hundred thousand of them. We have a reduction in violent crime because we put people behind bars when they use a gun in the commission of a crime. That's the better approach. But we're living in a society today where despair kind of grows in isolation. If a family member calls and says, my child, my brother, my sister is disturbed, ought the state be able to go and get their weapon without a hearing? I, I think there needs to be a hearing, but the fact is we need to encourage that kind of uh, involvement. That's there's, a broader, exactly there's a broader issue do. here, Hugh, and there's a broader issue here as well. First of all, the only people that follow the law are law-abiding people. Criminals, by definition, ignore the law. So you can pass all the gun laws in the world like the left wants. The criminals are going to ignore it because they are criminals. Here's the real issue. The real issue, the real issue is not why, what are people using to commit violence, but why are they committing the violence. And here's the truth. Because you cannot separate the social, moral well-being of your people from their economic and other well-being. You cannot separate it. You can't have a strong country without strong people. You cannot have strong people without strong values. And you cannot have strong values without strong families and the institutions in this country that defend and support those Thank families. You, well, and today we have a left-wing government under this president that is undermining all of the institutions in society that support the family and teach those values. Senator Cruz, I wanted to go to you. You're a constitutional litigator. Are you afraid of the next step theory of what happens to Second Amendment rights? I, I am not. And, and you mentioned that the U.S. Supreme Court had right, rightly upheld the individual right to keep and bear arms. I was proud to lead 31 states before the U.S. Supreme Court defending the Second Amendment, and we won that landmark victory. And indeed, just a couple of years ago, when Harry Reid and Barack Obama came after the right to keep and bear arms of millions of Americans. I was proud to lead the fight in the United States Senate to protect our right to keep and bear arms. And for that reason, you, I was honored to be endorsed by Gun Owners of America Thank as you, the strongest supporter of the Second Amendment on this stage today. And Thank I will you, fight every day. I'd like to, to, turn, to, I'd like to turn to Dana Bash. You, Mr. Trump, you have said once or twice that you are really rich, and you are by far the richest person on this stage. Uh, Chris Christie says billionaires like you, and even people who make and, and earn far less, should no longer get Social Security, or at least there should be limits based on the, on the income. You think he's wrong? And if so, why? Speaking my, for myself, I'm okay with it. I think there's a certain truth to it. I tell people that, frankly, it has no impact on their life whatsoever. There are many people. I would almost say leave it up to them. But I would be willing to check it off and say I will not get Social Security. I do not. As a, as a policy. As a policy, I would almost leave it up to the people. Don't forget, they pay in and they pay in, and maybe they do well, and maybe some people want it. But the fact is that there are people that truly don't need it, and there are many people that do need it very, very badly. And I would be willing to write mine off 100 percent in. So is a voluntary program a way to get the Social Security system solvent again like that? No, it's not, but with Donald in it, it's a good start. That's very really good. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, <laughs> this is an issue that, that we've got to talk about, and we haven't talked about yet. 71% of all federal spending is on entitlements and debt service. When John Kennedy was elected president in 1960, it was 26%. Harvard and Dartmouth says that Social Security is going to go insolvent in seven to eight years. So what I say is very simple. We need to save this program for the good people out there who have paid into the system and need it. And if that means making sure that folks like Donald and many of us on this stage don't get it, 
that's the right thing to do, because here's what Hillary Clinton's going to want to do. She's going to want to put more money into a system that has already lied to us and stolen from us. This government doesn't need more money to make Social Security solvent. We need to be not paying out benefits to people who don't really need it. We need to protect the people whose Social Security needs the difference between picking between heat and rent and food. That's why I put out the proposal, and that's the people Thank I'm trying you, to Governor.